Well, what do you know? Why, Dora Foster, what are you doing in a beauty parlor at a time like this? Oh, hello, Jane. Oh, Dora, tell me, is it true that somebody left a baby on your doorstep? Well, yes, it's huge. I just heard about it. <laughs> well, it's the most exciting thing I ever heard of. Aren't you thrilled? He is. Oh, I wish I could go right home. Well, no wonder. You lucky thing. A foundling. I wouldn't mind something like that happening to me. No. Oh, oh maybe. Please hurry back to me and get me, Cindy. My goodness, I... I wonder how long it was there on the doorstep before anyone found it. Oh, Jane, you don't suppose exposure could hurt it, do you? It's, it's a very nice day. Yeah, you never can tell. That's the danger with foundling. Oh, don't worry. This one is probably as healthy as a little pig. Miss Watson, Miss Watson, uh, where's my hat? Where it always is, on the hat rack. Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm so flustered. I've got to buy a sterilizer. Uh, Miss Watson, where's my hat? Well, it's on your head now, Mr. Foster. Oh, oh yes, yes, so it is. Well, well, goodbye. Oh, no, no, wait. I want you to call my attorney. Uh, Mr. Jackson? Yes, yes, Mr. Jackson. And ask him what you do when a baby's found on your doorstep. Well, I know. You call the police. Now, look, Miss Watson, I want to keep this baby. Ask Mr. Jackson what I should do. Uh, take out a claim or what? <laughs> All right, Mr. Foster. Yeah, tell him to call me and let me know if he can stop proceedings right away. Yes, Mr. Foster. Well, goodbye. Where's my hat? Oh, yes. And tell him to be sure and make it good and legal. <laughs> Well, things have come to quite a pass, but uh, wait until Mr. and Mrs. Foster see their new baby. And meanwhile, I have a message for you. The convenience of Tom's is a great advantage. With Tom's in your pocket or pocketbook, you're always ready with relief for acid indigestion wherever you may go. Tom's are as convenient to take as a bit of candy. You don't have to have any water. You don't have to go through any bother. Just slip Tom's in your mouth as you would a candy mint. Now, think what an advantage this is when acid indigestion strikes while you're in a business meeting or on a train or in a theater. Yes, with thumbs on your person, you have first aid in case of acid indigestion. And once you learn the efficacy of thumbs, you'll make it a point to carry them with you always. For as every acid indigestion sufferer knows, you never know when or where. <clears throat> and would you remember, the thumbs metal container is just the thing in which to carry your loose ration tokens. If you have extra Tums carriers at home, give them to your neighbors, and they'll thank you. And now, back to A Date with Judy. Well, even Father has been led to believe that a baby has been left on a doorstep at home. Now, of course, it's really the high school team's mascot, a pig, which is named Baby. Now we find Judy and Randolph at home with the pig. Oh, Judy. Judy. Yes, Randolph. You know who just called? No. A reporter from a newspaper. Golly. He heard about Baby being found on our doorstep, and he wants to write a story. Oh, Butterfly, that's wonderful. We'll be on the front page. And he wanted to know if there was a note in the basket. Something like, uh, please take care of Baby, signed a heartbroken mother. What did you tell him? Oh, I told him there wasn't any note, so he said he'd make one up. See, that's nice of him. He's coming right after the house for an interview. With us? Randolph, wait till the team hears about this. You know, Judy, I had the funniest feeling all the time this reporter was talking that he thought Baby was a baby. A baby? Oh, Randolph, that's very silly. Where would he get an idea like that? I don't know. Oh, maybe it was my imagination. Except that Mrs. Whiteman called up a while ago. She did? Yeah, she said she wanted to give Baby a shower. A shower? <laughs> Judy, something tells me she thinks baby is a baby, too. You think so, Randall? Well, is Mrs. Whiteman the type to give a shower for a pig? <laughs> no, she isn't. Oh, Randall, you suppose... You suppose father thinks baby is a baby? Could be. After this, nothing would surprise me. He did act very funny on the phone. But he said he was going to call mother. You suppose he told her baby is a baby? Could be. Well... Where do you suppose they got that idea? Oh, Pig probably squealed on us. <laughs> well, now let's see. We had the sterilizer, the bottle warmer, the... You want a complete layer, don't you? Yes, sir, the whole trousseau. <laughs> the whole layer. Oh, whatever you call it, I want the whole work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we'll take nightgowns next. 
You'll need a bus for I don't care what we take next, only please make it snappy. I'm I'm kind of anxious to get home and see the baby. Oh, <laughs> the baby's been born? Well, of course it's been born. What a silly question. I, I just meant if it hasn't a layette yet, what is it wearing? Well, what it had on when it came, I suppose. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Uh-huh. Let me see. You'll yeah. want about six shirts and four dozen diapers uh-huh. and uh, over here the sheets and bedding and, oh, oh, pardon me, do you have a crib or a bassinet? Oh, we don't have a crib or a bassinet. Well, you weren't very well prepared, were you? <laughs> well, no. But the last thing in the world I expected at our house was a baby. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose we'll just choose a bassinet. All right, wrap one up. Oh, wouldn't you care to look at them, sir? No, no, you pick it. Oh, say, what are these over here? Oh, those are toy elephants. Elephants? Mm-hmm. Look more like giraffes to me. Really, sir, your baby hasn't a stitch to wear. I wouldn't bother with unessentials like toys if I were you. Well, he's got to have something to play with, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, I suppose you fathers are all alike. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not the father. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then you're the grandfather? The grandfather? A man of my age? Well, certainly not. Well, may I ask just what relation you are to the baby, sir? Oh, I, I'm no relation at all. <laughs> yeah, we found the baby on the doorstep. <laughs> on the doorstep? Oh, well, how wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's just like a movie, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I never thought it would happen to me, but since it has, let's get the uh, layout together quickly so I can scrap out of it. <laughs> That layette. Yeah, layette, yes. All right, now we'll go right ahead with it. We'll want bottles and nipples uh-huh. and... <laughs> on your doorstep. <laughs> and baby oil and cotton and... Oh, by the way, have you a pediatrician for the baby? Uh-huh. You know, a baby doctor. Oh, no, no, we haven't. Well, I was just thinking a little baby found on a doorstep. You're absolutely right. We had a baby doctor for our own children, and they never went through what this baby's gone through. <laughs> oh, say, look, could I use the phone here? Why, certainly. Fine. Let me see. We have Dr. Harrington for Randolph. Hey. Mm. Oh, here it is. Yeah. I'm going to feel better with a doctor. Hello? Oh, hello, Dr. Harrington. Uh, this is Mr. Foster. Melvin Foster? Well, what do you want? Well, I'd like you to go over to my house right away and look at the baby. Say, listen, Foster, your boy is uh, about 12 years old now. I'm a baby doctor. Oh, it's not for Randolph. It's a newborn baby. Why, Foster, that's great. <laughs> Certainly is nice to have you for a customer again. When did this happen? Well, I haven't time to explain it to you now, but uh, will you please go over to my house right away? Why, sure, certainly will. Why? Uh... And, uh, say, Foster. What? Huh? How's Mrs. Foster? Oh, she's fine. Isn't that great? <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you. Oh, thanks, thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> out the window. Oh, it's father. Do you think he thinks we've got a baby here? Well, I don't think he bought all those packages for a pig. <laughs> Gee, I hope he didn't buy much. Hey, somebody open the door. I got my arm full. Oh, hello, father. Well, where is it? Where's what? Well, the baby, of course. No, it's the baby. Yeah, it sure is nice to come home to a little goody baby again. <laughs> 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 oh, it's been such a long time. Well, where is it? Oh, uh, uh, Judy, Judy, come here. Yeah? Judy, would you mind explaining some things to Father? I just remembered I've got an important appointment. So long. Well, where's he going? Oh, he just hasn't the heart to break it to you. He wants me to. Judy, is, is something wrong with the baby? Well, not exactly wrong. It, well, where is it? Oh, Melvin, you're home already. Now, it took me so long to get here. Laura, so, uh, Judy says something's wrong with the baby. Oh, nothing's oh. wrong with him. I mean, he isn't sick or anything. Well, where is the little tyke? He's in the kitchen. In the kitchen? Well, I never heard of such a thing, Judy. Where's your mind? Well, see, where did you want me to put him? In bed, naturally. <laughs> in my bed? Well, oh, father's in my bed. Didn't that ever occur to you? But frankly, no. Oh, my goodness, Judy. Gee, Mother, I never dreamed you and father be this nice about it. Nice about it? Well, anybody with simple common decency would be nice about it. Yes, but you seem to be going a little overboard. 
And besides, I don't think it's so decent to put a little pig in your bed. Oh, Judy, how can you say such a thing? Just because he's a foundling. But, Mother, baby isn't quite a baby. Huh? Well, that is, he's young and everything, but... Well, the fact is, he's not really a baby. Judy, do you know what you're saying? Yes, I do, Father. You kind of had the wrong impression. Baby was left on the doorstep, all right, but... Well, he's the mascot of the baseball team. A little baby, the mascot of the baseball team? <laughs> no, Father, that's what I'm telling you. He's not a baby. He's a pig. A pig? You said it was a baby. No, I said it was a pig named Baby. Go oh, for the love of it. <laughs> Oogie left it on the doorstep so I'd keep it while he's out of town. Judy. Judy Foster. Just wait till I pull myself together. Or am I going to get mad? See, I'm sorry you got the wrong impression. Do you realize what this has done to me? Why, I've told everybody we, we found a baby on our doorstep. See, Father, what a shame. Do you realize I've been handing out cigars? You have, Father? Do you realize that I've told her to lay out home from town? <laughs> For a pig? Oh, Ellen, it is kind of funny. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> laugh, laugh. Do you realize that I've tried to adopt this pig? <laughs> oh, gee, Father, it was all Oh, my goodness. The doctor. Oh. I sent for a baby doctor. Oh. <laughs> yes, I know, Father. He's here. Oh, he's here. He's here. Yes. He was awfully mad, too, when he found out baby was a pig. But he went in the kitchen to look at it, and he's been in there ever since. For more than a half hour. Oh, what a fool he must think I am. Well, now, what can he be doing looking at a pig? Probably trying to spot the resemblance. <laughs> you know, he'll wonder why you didn't send for a veterinarian. Well, well, Foster, things certainly do happen in this house. Okay? Doctor, if you say anything about a chip off the old block. <laughs> We're terribly sorry, Doctor. I hope this hasn't put you off. As a matter of fact, I found it rather interesting. Put me back to my days at medical school. Well, Doctor, I, I I wouldn't have had to waste your time on a pig for anything. A pig? Now, there's where you're wrong. What was that, Dr. Harrington? I said, there's where you're wrong. You haven't got a pig, Foster. You've got seven pigs. What? <laughs> yes, sir. Baby just gave birth to a fine litter of six. <laughs> Well, Judy will be back in just a moment, but uh, while we wait for the family to recover from the latest startling event, I wonder, could you picture yourself feeling miserable and distressed due to a spell of acid indigestion? And then, picture how quickly the scene changes when you take Tum, how fast you feel better. In a jiffy, they ease the heartburn, the acid pain, and the miserable stuffed-up full feeling. Tums are prompt, effective relief for acid indigestion. Tums contain no bicarbonate of soda, no baking soda. They relieve in a modern, scientific way that's entirely different. All you do is slip one or two Tums in your mouth, as you would candy mints at the first sign of acid indigestion. There's no fuss or bother, nothing to mix or stir. You don't even need water. And you get relief from that upset acid stomach promptly. Ask any druggist tonight, or first thing tomorrow morning, for Tums. Only ten cents a roll or the three-roll package for a quarter. But insist upon Tums for the tummy, T-U-M-S. There are many imitations of Tums, but no substitute for them. And now, here are the Fosters again. I just can't believe it. Baby having sex, baby. I think I'm going to faint. Move over, Dora. I'm going to faint myself. My goodness. Wait till the baseball team hears about this. I bet they'll win all their games next year. Hey, look. Out on the porch, a man with a camera. It must be the newspaper reporter. A newspaper reporter? Yes, he's going to interview Baby. Tell him to come right in, Randolph, and bring his camera. Okay. Uh, should I tell him to take Baby alone, or do you want a group picture? A Date with Judy is written by Arlene Leslie and stars Louise Erickson and Dick Stable. The original music is composed and conducted by Tommy Peluso. The program is produced and directed by Helen Mack. We're inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday at the same time to keep your date with Judy. Chaperone by Tums. Quick relief from acid indigestion. Get a roll tonight. Only ten cents at all drugstores. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>